Your most important NASCAR betting stop of the day is back. This is the money stop, and we are going to Chicago. And Cole specifically, you are there in Chicago. This is the money stop presented by Kicking the Tires. He is Cole on site at the Chicago Street Course. I'm Steven, coming all the way out from the East Coast. But Cole, we unite here to try and help fans win some money, as we do every single week. Coming off Nashville, which was a chaotic race, five overtimes, a NASCAR record. Before we jump into the madness that was the Chicago street course last year, we have to start with Nashville and what an absolute chaotic end it was to this race. But I also want to say that we pinpointed Joey Logano as a guy that not a lot of people were talking about. That was one of our sleepers. And lo and behold, he was the winner of this race. And it was really, it turned into a race of attrition. Who had the most fuel? Who had the most stamina? It went 40 miles over the scheduled distance, and Joey Logano, who was right on that bubble that we talked about, the wind was coming, he was going to be tested, and lo and behold, he pulled it off, and he is headed to the playoffs once again. Yeah, what a wild race. I really enjoyed this one, honestly. Like you said, it was a complete war of attrition, and even that might even be an understatement, just seeing all the five overtime restarts, the fuel mileage, the tire wear, everything that went into this race was seriously such a grind atop the pit box inside the car, and I can really appreciate races like that. But yeah, now Team Penske, all three cars are locked into the playoffs with a win. Huge win for that number 22 team. Um, they've been they've had a lot of speed the last few weeks, uh, I guess going on this last month actually, and for them to, to lock in as the driver that was in the 16th position in the standings entering this race, that was a huge deal for him. Um, it also a, a, makes a big impact on certain drivers around that bubble, like Bubba Wallace, Ty Gibbs, Ross Chastain. So it makes things very interesting going into this Chicago street course race. And, you know, going into this weekend, one thing that weighed heavy on my mind was how that entire month of June, it was just strategy heavy race after strategy heavy race, nonstop, just absolute barrage of fuel mileage finishes, tire wear, wet weather racing under, um, uh, on an oval for the first time, there was all these different variables that went into all five of these races, and, it, it, and you're going to Chicago now, which is another complete unknown. I know they had the, the first race there last year, but it was, uh, you know, impacted by rain. It was um, shortened and delayed by darkness, um, and obviously there's just the the course itself. There's, a, there's these so many bumps in the track different surfaces, whether it be a a repave or an old abrasive surface, it makes it very challenging for these drivers and these teams to dial in these cars and really have a good baseline to work for this weekend. So I think this whole month of June set up what what should be a pretty solid day for us analytically going in because um, you have seen these strategy heavy races and you've seen these teams that have been able to overcome the adversity and the unknowns. And um, it's it's setting up what I think is going to be a really, really fun race this weekend in Chicago. And on that note, we're going to take a little bit of a different sort of uh, idea to this episode where a lot of times we'll bring in a lot of different numbers and trends uh, pre-qualifying and before the cars hit the track. But obviously, that's not going to be possible this week because we've done one race here. And as you said, it was so chaotic that we really don't have a lot to go off of. We'll look at the top 10 from that race last year uh, and we'll look at what the odds are are forecasted as per bet MGM, but there is going to be a lot of unknowns and a lot of money to be made this week. And it's going to be honestly a very difficult race to predict. It's going to be a wild card just as it was last year. Before we moved officially out of Nashville, though, I want to run down this top 10 because there were a lot of really cool surprises in it, including the runner up finisher, which was Zane Smith with his best career cup series finish. He's on the rise. Tyler Reddick almost won this race, finishing in third. Ryan Priest, in need of a big run, finished fourth. Chris Buescher, fifth. Ryan Blaney, sixth. Bubba Wallace, in seventh. Kyle Larson, another one of our favorites, persevered to finish eighth. Daniel Hemrick, ninth. And Noah Gregson finished in the top ten. So between those ten drivers, I think with the exception of Kyle Larson, you could make the argument that nine of them were were surprise top ten finishers just because of the way that the the end of that race sort of played out. But I want to take it to the bank here now, Cole, and look at this upcoming race at the Chicago street course. And I'm going to start with who DraftKings sees as the pre-qualifying odds leaders. Remember, we saw a huge upset in this race last year when Shane Van Gisbergen won in his first ever NASCAR start. And if anyone had money on SVG last year, he was he made a lot of people a lot of money because he was not one of the favorites. And lo and behold, after the race he had last year, 
He is the favorite, at valued at plus 550. Then you've got three drivers tied at the second best in odds with Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, and Tyler Reddick at plus 625, while Chase Elliott rounds out the top five at plus 850, pre-qualifying per DraftKings. So there is a lot to go off of uh, in terms of the odds this week, a lot to to kind of dissect, I guess, so to speak. And really, Cole, all we have to go off of are the vibes going into this week. Like you said, we can go off of the strategy and adapting we saw from certain teams during the month of June. And I think that's pretty much what we're going to base our 12 drivers off this episode. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for this week is I, I know we do these episodes early to to maximize the odds before the on track action, but this is a weekend where I would almost advocate um, to wait until practice and qualifying because we've seen it all year with this package and especially on the road courses. Track position is so pivotal, and uh, it really might not even pay to, to pick somebody as a race winner or for a top five finish if they're not starting inside the top ten or around that top fifteen area. So. Um, I would definitely wait to put a larger sum of money on some of these um, race winner picks um, until we see on-track action. But I think there's definitely a a way we can predict who's going to be a player in this race, just seeing what we saw on the road courses this year, what we saw this past month in these strategy-heavy races in the month of June. And, you know, just like you said, from the the vibes, our intuition, we've done a really good job of um, hitting on that with these um, speedways like Daytona, Talladega, and Atlanta. And even the road courses uh, in the past. So I think um, regardless of of what we see tomorrow and Sunday, I think we'll have a pretty good baseline to work with for you guys um, going into this weekend. Well, let's roll through this here. I'm going to run down the top 10 from last year's Chicago Street course and reminding that what you pointed out in that this was race was severely impacted by rain. The delays ended up being uh, making the race be shortened due to the darkness. So... A lot to unpack, but here's how they ran it down. Shane Van Gisbergen, I mentioned, won in his NASCAR debut. Justin Haley finished second. Chase Elliott third. Kyle Larson fourth. Kyle Busch fifth. Austin Sindrick sixth. Michael McDowell seventh. Joey Logano eighth. Ty Gibbs ninth. And Chris Buescher in tenth. So I'm going to, you know, we'll go off of, we had two road course races earlier this year. This, of course, is a street course, um, but also thinking about what we saw from that top ten and uh, what we have to go off of from this past month of June. Let's take it to the bank here, Cole, and and give me a couple of favorites for this week's race. I'll kick things off with Kyle Larson. Um, I like what I've seen from this team all season. I think they're definitely in championship form. Um, Speaking on the volatility that I I ended with last week on regard to the mile-and-a-half tracks and intermediate tracks, we did see that once again. Um, He had a great car in this race, but towards the end, um, tempers flared up between him and Denny Hamlin once again, which, by the way, Denny Hamlin did mention on Action Detrimentalist podcast that this is now a rivalry. So <laughs> um, something to look at going forward. But speaking with Cliff Daniels this weekend, who we regard as one of the, the strongest minds in the garage area, um, I think they have a really good grasp on this track. And the prospects for this weekend for me, I see them as probably the favorite over SVG and the likes of Christopher Bell and Tyler Reddick, only because um, we've seen... Cliff Daniels and, and the work he's been able to do atop the pit box as one of the, the best strategists in the garage. But looking at this race last year, Kyle Larson, I felt if this race had gone the full distance, they would have probably won this race. By the time it ended um, 22 laps prematurely, they had one of the faster cars, if not the fastest car. And speaking with Cliff Daniels um, in the middle of this week, he sounded like they were on the wrong side of the strategy. And for them, for them to be on the wrong side of the strategy and to still finish fourth in that race... That speaks volumes, and just speaking on this year and what we've seen from Kyle Larson and that five team on the road courses, they won the most recent race at Sonoma. They pretty much dominated that race, actually. They also had a good race at Coda, and just speaking on the road courses as a whole this season, um, HMS has won both races, first by William Byron at Coda, second by Kyle Larson, and looking at the, the top five from this race last year at Chicago, the top five were all Chevrolets, so I think Chevrolets are going to be fast at this track. Don't count out the Toyotas, obviously. Fords have been quick, too. But in my opinion, I like Kyle Larson's value for a race winner at plus 625. Um, He is the most expensive driver for DFS at $10,500. And I will say this in regards to DFS. I I wouldn't construct a lineup and submit it until we have the qualifying order. But um, I I do like Kyle Larson quite a bit. For a second favorite for this race, I'm going to go with the Toyota and uh, Christopher Bell. I think... 
we, we've seen from Christopher Bell this entire month of June was just exceptional. Um, rattling off five straight top fives. He got the two wins, three on the season, and he's a road course ace. He had a great race at Sonoma. He had a fast car at Coda. I know he didn't get a great finish last year at the Chicago Street Course, but that was mainly because of the split strategies and how certain teams got played out by the darkness aspect of things. And I thought he had one of the better cars, too. Um, I, he won, actually, both stages, if I'm not mistaken, in this race. So, uh, led a ton of laps in this race. Um, I, I think he's, by far and away, got to be one of the favorites at, again, plus 625, tied Kyle Larson for the second shortest odds to win this thing. And for DFS, you're looking at Christopher Bell at $10,200, which is actually second most expensive behind Kyle Larson. So, I'm looking at the two um, odds-on favorites per DraftKings, I guess as my personal favorites for the Chicago street course. And I, I'm, I'm kind of with you there. And I'm looking at the drivers that have been hot lately, the drivers that put up a strong result and good speed last time we were at Chicago. And you cannot leave the favorites category without SVG. I mean, he won this race last year. I think he is he absolutely should be the odds-on favorite as BetMGM has him at plus 550. I mean, you're talking about a guy that came out with zero experience in NASCAR and won the race last year and I think you know he had such a huge leg up on the competition last year with the street course racing experience I think that the competition will have caught up a little bit but he's still the ringer of this track and he is absolutely going to be the favorite in my opinion going in there, there's no Hendrick Chevy in front of him I think SVG is my clear-cut favorite to win this race and let's face it, too, this spurred kind of a career change for him. He went to the Xfinity Series. He's won two races there. So he proved that that was not a fluke. It's a guy that's capable of going out and winning races every single week in the Xfinity Series, contending for a championship there as he's already in the playoffs. And, you know, this is where he initially flexed his muscles. And I fully expect that based off his dominance at the Chicago Street Course last year and just the way... He just enforced his will, and it was not even a shadow of a doubt. Like, any time he faced adversity in this race last year, he just made it look so unbelievably easy. And so I, I feel very confidently SVG is going to be another favorite to win this race. And I'm going to go with, for my second one, I'll take another Hendrick Chevy in Chase Elliott, who's not one of the, the road course winners this year. His two teammates in Larson and Byron have won, but you look at, for Chase Elliott this year, he finished fourth at uh, Sonoma earlier this year, one of his best tracks. We talked about it a lot. He's been the most consistent driver in the garage this season uh, by a lot of metrics. I think entering this race last year, obviously there were a lot of question marks coming off of the injury, but he wound up finishing third in this race. And I think there's something to be said for that in, in a season that was definitely down for Chase Elliott. Now he's having one of the best seasons of his career statistically. And you know, there wasn't it wasn't very long ago that we looked at Chase Elliott as the favorite, the premier road course racer in the sport. And I think that he still believes that in his head. And I fully expect that the Chevys and specifically the Hendrick Chevys are going to be fast again this week. And Chase Elliott is going to factor into the win for this one. So it, when we're looking at potential high floor, high ceiling drivers this week. I love that group of four of Larson, Bell, Shane Van Gisbergen and Chase Elliott. Yeah, honestly, outside of my two picks in Larson and Bell, SVG and Chase Elliott were my other two that I was going to go with. And even outside of that, I was going to go with Tyler Reddick, who was also a top five in uh, the odds to win this race. So Vegas, I think, did a great job in predicting the the, the top five finishers, or I guess the top five uh, best shots to win this race. And uh, with that, let's kick off our sleepers here. I'm going to start things off here. Um, so I spoke earlier in the week with um, Cliff Daniels, Chris Gabehart, and Chris Gale. Chris Gale is Ty Gibbs' crew chief. And I actually have a great feeling about Ty Gibbs this weekend. Um, he hit a little bit of a sophomore slump that month of June, and that was, again, a product of a lot of unknowns and um, just a lot of just really hectic races, um, beginning with Gateway and ending with Nashville. But the speed has been there on a regular basis, a weekly basis, and the talent is undeniable in that kid. And I think what we've seen from Ty Gibbs in his young career in the Cup and the Xfinity Series is his ability to execute on road courses. And speaking with Chris Gale, he is a firm believer that road courses are his best style track uh, on the circuit. And I think for that, he has to be one of my best sleepers going in. Um, he finished top 10 in this race last year. He finished third at Coda. 
And I, I just love what I've seen from this kid um, his entire career, whether it be Cup or Xfinity, on these style of tracks. Uh, for the race win, he is plus 1600 For DFS, he is um, $8,400, which I love as a value. Um, and I, I really do believe that he's going to be a strong contender for this win, a top five finish as well. So um, love me, Ty Gibbs, this weekend. Uh, and then for my other sleeper, I'm going to go with one of our new road course aces in the next-gen era in Chris Busher. Love what I've seen from this team um, as of late. He's got back-to-back top fives. He finished top 10 at the street course last year. And he's also someone who's finished, who had a streak of 10 consecutive top 10 finishes on road courses in the next-gen era. So he is a guy that knows how to get around these tracks as well as anybody in the garage area. Um, he's turned it on as of late. He's kind of sitting on that points bubble now. His teammate Brad Keselowski is already locked into the playoffs with a win. After being a multi-race winner last year, you know he's itching to get back to victory lane. They have speed to get, to get back there. It's just been a matter of closing it out and having some um, good fortune go their way. And I think you, you look at what this team has done on the street course last year, what they've done on the road courses in their entire uh, next-gen era, it, it spells good things for this team. And looking at his odds for the race win, he is actually right around there with Ty Gibbs at plus 1,500, so right above him in the race winner odds. And he's also right above him for DFS at $8,800. So those are two guys who I see as legitimate sleepers for this win and drivers who have a chance to give you a really good quality day at a, a top five finisher prop in this race. I feel like this is the tier where there's value to be had this week because I like the idea of that a lot between Ty Gibbs and Chris Buescher both being in that plus 1,500, 1,600 range. And I'm going to pick a couple drivers just ahead of them. I think that there's... Definitely, I want to give an honorable mention sort of to William Byron because I'm not going to pick him, but he's valued at the same odds as Chris Buescher. And, you know, we mentioned the fact that Hendrick was strong here last year. The Chevys were strong here. And he, of course, won at Coda earlier this year. So honorable mention to William Byron. But I want to pick a couple of the typical road course ringers in this sleepers category. And starting with Michael McDowell, who's actually valued just outside the top five in odds at plus 1,300. But Obviously, when you consider the fact that McDowell hasn't been a consistent winner in his career, that makes him a sleeper in my mind, and I definitely like his odds to finish maybe in the top five at plus 160. And, uh, you know, listen, for Michael McDowell, it hasn't been obviously the season he wanted. He finished top 10 at this race last year. He's finished top 10 and and top five at at a lot of the road courses in his cup career, including the last one. He finished runner-up, remember, to Kyle Larson, so... I think that it's a little bit of a steep price for Michael McDowell in terms of his value at BetMGM. You're going to find him significantly lower at DraftKings. So if you do like Michael McDowell, that's definitely the direction you want to go. I think he's 10th in the odds per DraftKings. So BetMGM a lot higher on him, but I am high on Michael McDowell this week. I like what he did here last year. You know, obviously he's always great at the road courses and he he did well here last year, like I said before. So I, I think that Michael McDowell is definitely someone that's on my radar this week and should be on everybody's radar. And anytime we go to a road course, you're always going to think of A.J. Allmendinger. And I'm thinking of A.J. Allmendinger. He's plus 1,400. I know he hasn't done a lot of Cup Series races uh, recently, but listen, it's still the dinger. It's still a street course. And he comes to play at these events. He has a knack for these tracks with multiple turns. And I I just feel that my instincts are telling me This will be a strong week for A.J. Allmendinger every time he goes to a road course. We saw him finish sixth at Coda this year. We saw him finish sixth at Sonoma as well. So you're talking about sixth place finishes in both of the road course races this year. We go to the the street course now. And I think that, in my opinion, when A.J. was running a full Cup Series schedule, it kind of took away from his ability at the road courses, so to speak, because, you know, it feels like when he's on this part-time schedule, he's able to pour all of his time and energy into those three, four, five races, however many it is, that are on the road courses and the street courses. And when you look at these for AJ as kind of his Super Bowl in his wheelhouse, and he can dedicate all of his time and attention into the Chicago street course this week, I feel very strong that he's going to contend for the win as well. Yeah, I like both those picks a lot. I mean, AJ finished top 10 in both stages last year. I know they struggled a bit towards the end in trying to get that top 10 pace, but he's always a contender on these style of tracks. And Michael McDowell, obviously he's sitting well outside that points cutoff. He needs a win to make the playoffs for a second consecutive season in his final year at Front Row Motorsports. And he's someone that finished top five in both stages last year. uh, And someone who's just, you know, as as we both mentioned, an 
absolute ace on these style of tracks. So I love both those picks as well. Before we jump into the value picks, I wanted to point out one driver. Um, looking as, as I was going through the names, looking at some good values, Denny Hamlin is like abnormally low in the odds this week. He's actually below Ty Gibbs at plus 2,200 for the race win. He's valued at $8,000 for DFS. And I think that's kind of for good reason, only because he didn't finish top 10 in either stage. He really didn't have the best race at all um, at Chicago. And he's someone who's been very outspoken about how he's struggled on the road courses in the next-gen era. And for that, I think there is some caution to throw to the wind with Denny Hamlin this weekend. However, um, speaking with Chris Gabehart, who's also, in my opinion, one of the best crew chiefs in the garage area, one of the brightest minds in the garage area. Um, I think you can never count that team out, just seeing as they're always one of the best teams on a weekly basis. They're always contending for the wins. So I, I know last year um, they didn't have the best showing here, but it was also a very chaotic and unpredictable race. And for that, I think Denny Hamlin should not be overlooked, but he should definitely be um, considered with caution for this week. So if he's someone that you're considering, that's kind of my, my caution there. But Jumping into the value picks here, though, I think I would be irresponsible if I did not bring up last week's runner-up in Zane Smith, who was valued at $6,400. Um, first off, I know Zane Smith has not had the year that he had anticipated as a Cup Series rookie, but that should not take away from the fact that he is a wildly talented driver. We've seen what he could do in the Xfinity Series limited attempts. He's a Truck Series champion with multiple wins, road course wins at that. And he's someone who I always uh, peg as a contender on road courses when he was in those lower developmental series. Just somebody who knows how to get around those tracks. And I think um, this will obviously be a huge unknown for him, um, being his first trip there ever. Didn't turn a lap there last year in the cup car and uh, didn't race there in the truck series either, obviously. So that'll be a hurdle to overcome. But I think that momentum's definitely palpable. And for someone like Zane Smith, who is a very temperamental driver in that regard and, and – um, I think that'll pay off in a big way for him um, going into this weekend. But another driver who I'm looking at, it has to be Justin Haley. I mean, he finished runner-up here last year. He led a bunch of laps late in the running. And he's just been a driver that's been so impressive this year. Like, he's had multiple top 10 finishes. He's taken Rick Ware Racing to, to heights that I didn't think that they'd be able to get to. I, admittedly, even with him in the car. I know he's a talented driver. He has wins in the Xfinity Series. He's a Cup Series winner as well. But... Um, it's just the <laughs> what we've seen from that team um, since they've been in the Cup Series has not been the best, and for him to for him to do what he's been able to do in that car is really impressive to me. He's a driver once again who, whether it be road course or not, he's he's been able to overcome the odds and challenge for those top 15s, challenge for those top tens, and I love what I've seen from this kid all season. So, uh, Justin Haley at sixty seven hundred dollars is also a really good value pick in my mind for this weekend. It's kind of tough to say with the value right now. I like those two picks a lot, especially Justin Haley coming off the second place finish at Chicago last year. Um, when I look at the drivers outside the top 15 in odds, I feel like there's some good value to be had in some of these four drivers. Like when you look outside the top 15, I look at a guy that finished top 10 last year. Austin Sindrick finished sixth in this race. He's valued at plus 4,000 in odds, which is just outside the top 15. And right behind him is his Penske teammate, last week's winner, Joey Logano, at plus 5,000. And I think of a couple guys that enter this race hot. They both want, have won races in the month of June. In the case of Joey, he's coming off of the momentum of a win last week. And I just think that Joey, we've said it a lot, in these kind of crown jewel events, he always comes out to play. And, and look at Chicago last year. He finished eighth, and, and Cindric finished sixth. So... While all eyes, of course, are going to be on those Chevys and the Hendricks and the SVGs of the world and even the Gibbs Toyotas, I think that Vegas is surprisingly low on the Penske Fords with how well they've run this season. And I want to give an honorable mention, too, because I, I, I think it would be I don't think it would be accurate to call him a value pick. But Ryan Blaney as well, another guy that finished in the top 10 last week. I mean, we saw Ryan Blaney take a step forward, I feel, in the month of June, obviously, and he is valued just ahead of Logano and Sindrick. So you've got all three Penske Fords, one behind the next in the odds this week per Vegas. And I feel that one, if not all three of them, is could be poised for a good day here just because I feel like they're peaking at a good time. And again, coming off of a lot of momentum. So I like the Penske Fords as values this week, but specifically I'll pick the two that finished in the top 10 last year at Chicago, which was Sindrick and Joey Logano. Those are outstanding values. All three Penske Fords valued in the $7,000 range. But yeah, 
Austin Sendrick, he is one of those guys who always excels on the road courses. Got that top 10 here last year, uh, and I think that's a, an excellent pick. Same with Logano, someone who's been heating up. He's got the win, obviously, in the bank last week, which should definitely translate to some speed this weekend. And, yeah, finished also top 10 there last year as well. So um, I love both those picks a lot as high-end um, value picks for the Chicago Street Course. As we pick one driver from each tier, Cole, I will make this pretty simple. I'm going to take the the road course ringers. I'm going to go with SVG as my favorite this week. I'll take the dinger from the sleepers, and I'll take Austin Sindrick from the values there. Right on. I'm going to go with Kyle Larson for my favorite, Ty Gibbs for my sleeper, and then Justin Haley for my value pick. Well, Cole, let's talk big money bets here because, you know, you mentioned the fact that it probably wouldn't be smart to lock many bets in this week before the cars hit the track. You definitely want to see who unloads fast, who's got a leg up on the competition entering the weekend. Um, but but I think that there's definitely some value to be had. When you look at some of those guys, like I just mentioned, with Ryan Blaney, Austin Sindrick, Joey Logano, they're plus 120, 135, and 150 to finish in the top 10, which to me seems like very solid value. You don't need more than the top 10 out of them. And then you get to some of the other guys we talked about, like, Michael McDowell at plus 160 to finish in the top five. I really like Chase Elliott at plus 115 to finish in the top five. Uh, After that, once you get to the SVGs and the Kyle Larsons of the world, there's not a lot of value to be had. Um, But even, you know, a guy like Ty Gibbs that you you liked a lot this week as one of your sleepers, valued at plus 210 to be in the top five. So I I think that there is some value pre-qualifying right now, but definitely one of those weeks where I definitely would like to see uh, what the cars look like when they hit the track. Right, and it's it's tough because there are some really enticing values. I think the one that jumps off the page to me is is Ty Gibbs top five plus two ten. But like you said, it, it's really tough to to throw up throw big money on a bet without knowing the starting order. Because like I said earlier in the show, track position is so pivotal at a, ra- a race like this. So, I mean, I, some of the ones you mentioned that I liked a lot. I like Chase Elliott top five plus one fifteen. My definite big money bet is Ty Gibbs top five uh, plus two ten. And then I also like the Austin Centric top 10 value at plus 135 for someone who finished there last year and someone who's a road course uh, ace. So definitely value to be had. But like the both of us just said, I think um, it's definitely very, very important to keep an eye on qualifying before locking in big money. But then then again, you, you got to also think um, if those guys do qualify inside the top five or close to the top 10, um, top half, the top 15, like it's going to be tough to find some good value from those drivers. So Um, I I guess what I'm saying is obviously they're big money bets for a reason. You can throw money on it if you feel comfortable one way or another, but there's also no guarantees there just considering the lack of track time, lack of experience, and the uh, unknown of the starting order for Sunday. Yeah, I'm not going to probably put a a, a lot of big money bets down this week. Uh, I do want to talk while we're on the topic of prop bets. There's a few interesting ones on uh, team and manufacturers where – uh, you can bet on the top Chevy car, the top Ford car, top Toyota, and I feel like there could be some value to be made here. I'm not 100% sure where it is without having seen the cars hit the track, but you can bet on SVG to be the top Chevy per plus 260. You can bet on a uh, Christopher Bell to be the top Toyota for plus 190, even Ty Gibbs at plus 575. And I think the Fords is where there could be a lot of value to be made here. If you pick Joey Logano to be the top Ford, that would be a value of plus nine fifty, uh, and and you know for those last two camps, I'm not sure it's it's a very cut and dry answer as it is with SVG. But even there, you've got Larson, Chase Elliott. But more than anything, I just find that those I find those values very enticing. Uh, but one of those things that I'm going to still want to wait to see how how everything unloads and what the situation is going into Sunday. Let's talk also some DFS strategy here, Cole. We, we talked a little bit about. Uh, some of the driver values entering this week and the fact that you know your aces are the highest priced drivers you want an svg kyle larson or christopher bell in your lineup i think that's the clear-cut top three uh, but there's also some more model moderately priced aces that you could take advantage of like a chase elliott at 9600 who's 900 dollars cheaper than kyle larson the most expensive driver so you can get a potentially really good value there uh, SVG this week is valued at 10000 so I like the idea of building my lineup around him as he was the third most expensive driver. Um, but I don't know if you're looking at the odds right now, Cole, uh, or at least the, the DFS budget prices. Definitely a, a race where you're going to want to see who's uh, starting 
uh, inside the top 10, outside the top 10 for place differential points. Um, but, but you definitely want a few drivers that are going to be aces in the hole. that are going to set a lot of fast laps with clean air and uh, lead, lead a bunch of laps in this race to get you a lot of fantasy points. Without a doubt. And, and like you said, there is a lot of value this weekend. So the lineup that I made, I had SVG lead it off $10,000. I also had Michael McDowell, Justin Haley, Ty Gibbs, Austin Sindrick, and Chris Buescher. So all drivers that we mentioned this episode. And um, I think the big, the big thing, again, is just to hammer home, do not submit anything until we see the results of qualifying because track position is so key in the Chicago street course and on the road courses in general. So um, I, I think with that, we, we've done a pretty good job picking our personal favorite sleepers and values for this weekend, um, just kind of giving our input on which drivers have the most value going in. And, um, you know, for as, as much of an unknown as this race is going to be with the um, what's looking like clear skies right now and for the next couple days, um, I, I think it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a very fun one to watch. I'm very excited to be out here in Chicago. The atmosphere is already electric. And um, I'm looking forward to winning a lot of people a lot of money this weekend. Absolutely. And just to double down, if there's any confidence to be had on a DFS side of things, the lineup I made contains four of the same drivers as you. I also took SVG. Justin Haley, Michael McDowell, and Austin Sindrick. And whereas you took Chris Buescher and Ty Gibbs, I went with AJ Allmendinger for more of a premium and rounded out my lineup with Ryan Blaney, who's at 7,800, a really good value for a guy that finished top 10 uh, in in the race last week. And, you know, we've seen the value in these Penske's right now. So for me, uh, I, I think that that gives me a little more confidence in Daily Fantasy, knowing that you and I had very similar lineups. Uh, but definitely something that you're going to want to wait and see uh, by the time things are all said and done with qualifying. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like, I, I know there are a lot of unknowns and uncertainty going in, but it's still, like, a, like a similar to a road course. You know who the players are going to be, um, and it, it's really not going to be that wildly different, I don't think, especially with the, the weather being much different than it is. Um, they're not going to be using the wet weather tires, I don't think, at this point, so... Um, you know, there is stuff we can go based off of. I think we did a good job showcasing that this this weekend. All right. So let's get down to business here, Cole. Um, going off the vibes, going off of what we know and could be uh, relevant this week at the Chicago Street Course. You are there. You have the advantage of the vibes and the inside information that can definitely help us win some money this week for all the listeners out there. Um Let's let's go with some race winners. You got the first pick this week. I can get the first pick out of sleeper, uh, but let's let's go through how we see this playing out. Who's your, who's your race winner pick for the Chicago Street Course this year? I got to go with Kyle Larson. Um, I think in any of these strategy heavy races, um, that that number five team immediately has a leg up with the pit crew, with Cliff Daniels top of the pit box and Kyle Larson behind the wheel. Um, there are few teams better when it, in that regard when it comes to those strategy dependent races. And again, just like speaking with Cliff Daniels earlier in the week, I just got the the um, inclination that they they have they're content with what they learned from that race last year. Obviously, they they had a lot of speed in the road courses this year. They won the most recent one at Sonoma, and they've been one of the fastest cars all season. So I know a lot of the talks going to be on SVG and, and the guys like Christopher Bell and Tyler Reddick and all and all those names. But I really have a great feeling that Kyle Larson is going to come out. Uh, guns a blazing and get the job, job done and win this uh, Chicago street course race. Because again, speaking with Cliff Daniels, they felt they were on the wrong side of the strategy. They got kind of burned out by the uh, the shortened race due to darkness and they still finished top five. And I think they, again, had probably the fastest car at the time the race was called. So I like Kyle Larson a lot this weekend. It's a great pick. And uh, any race that's going to be dictated by strategy, Kyle Larson would be my pick too. But uh, this week, I'm going to go for the low-hanging fruit. I'm going to take SVG for the winner. I just think that even still, even with a race under our belts uh, after last year, I just feel that he's so far ahead of the competition uh, based on what we saw last year that that's going to pay dividends for SVG again this season. And I feel that he's going to go out there and win this race once again. We'll see how how much the competition caught up. I think that there's going to be some part of the gap that has been closed but I don't think it's going to be enough to take take the win away from SVG this year once again, especially, again, talking about the fact that I think that the Xfinity experience goes a long way, too, for him with the two wins and racing in similar equipment, similar cars all season long. I feel pretty strongly about SVG this week. I also really like 
you're picking Kyle Larson. I like Chase Elliott this week too, um, but SVG is my pick for the win. And as far as the sleeper goes, I want to go for that perfect mix of somebody that finished in the top 10 last year, we know is good at at, uh, road courses, and someone that we know is on the right side of their kind of season trajectory. And to me, that's Austin Sindrick, who's just outside the top 15 in odds. I'll take Sindrick as my sleeper, finished sixth year last year. We know he's good on the road courses, and uh, we know what he's capable of and stealing a win last month in June. So uh, I'll take Sindrick as my sleeper. I'll take SVG as my winner. Very nice. I was definitely going to pick Austin Sindrick if you had not. So excellent pick there. Uh, for me, I'm going to go with somebody that we did not mention this episode yet, but it's somebody who I've always admired uh, in, in regard to their uh, road course racing craft. He's a winner in the truck series on a road course. He's done excellent this season. Uh, that's the, last, the last two seasons, actually. He's been challenging for top 15s, top 10s. I'm going to go with Todd Gilliland. Um, he finished 19th at the street course last year. Again, I just like what I've seen from this driver um, the last two seasons collectively in the Cup Series, but especially um, throughout his entire career on the road courses. So um, I know he, we had mentioned him. We mentioned his teammate, Michael McDowell. And having that mentor like McDowell on your side, someone who's so esteemed on these style tracks, I think that's going to pay off in a big way for him this weekend uh, in top 15, maybe even top 10 fashion for Todd Gilliland. Well, Cole, you're physically there. You arrived uh, about 24 hours ago now. You got kicked off your 4th of July at Wrigley Field like any great American should. What are you feeling like right now? What are the vibes right now in Chicago as you wait in the hotel room before you head to the track today? Man, I am so pumped up. Like, just getting to Wrigley Field yesterday, you really felt the energy that was pulsating throughout the city. Um, And obviously that's partially due to being at Wrigley Field on 4th of July, which is, like, the most American thing you could possibly do. (laughs) But um, just the the, the way the city has embraced NASCAR from what I've seen walking around and, and whatnot... It really is very awesome to see, um, and I just cannot wait to get down to Grant Park here within the hour. Uh, w- once we wrap up this podcast, I'll be hip- hopping on the train on the blue line, getting down there, and uh, get my first look at the track. I know it's still under construction. They're going to finish it up today because um, all the on-track action is not till tomorrow, but speaking with uh, SVG a little bit later, Daniel Suarez, Joey Logano, and also taking a, a track tour myself with uh, track president and former track president at Phoenix Raceway my good friend Julie Giese, so cannot wait to get down there. It's going to be an incredible weekend. Again, the energy is off the charts, and I think that's going to be felt evidently through the television sets uh, on Sunday. That's extremely exciting. This has become one of my favorite races. Uh, Just love seeing NASCAR in a mainstream market at a track that they're literally building in the middle of the city. It's everything you love to see, NASCAR in front of a new audience and, and a race that was extremely exciting this year and brought a lot of new eyes on the sport. And we're going to do it again this year. It's going to be very exciting. This Sunday, 4.30 Eastern time, the Chicago street course will take place. And Cole will be on the ground, is on the ground in Chicago. And later today, we'll be talking with some drivers as well as the track president, Julie Giese. So uh, a lot to be had on social media at the underscore money stop for more inside intel. And then Cole's social media, my social media will have all of our developing thoughts throughout the weekend. And there is going to be a lot of developing thoughts and strategy and things to talk about before, during, and after this race. So this has been great. This has been an episode that, honestly, we didn't have a lot to go off of for, but I feel pretty confidently about the things we have spoken of. So we're going to drop the jack as any good money stop does. This most important stop of the day has officially come to an end. So we hope you the best. Uh, Hope you're telling us this week, wishing for the best in your betting luck. And uh, this is a fun one with the Chicago Street Course. So for Cole, I'm Steven. We're going to drop the jack here on the Money Stop, and we'll see you next week.